Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who have woken up and survived the Marseille traffic early to come here this morning. It's very good to see you. Now, I'm going to start with quite a bold statement that there's no comprehensive global action plan for rural water supplies. But I don't want you to be alarmed in any way at, at this. It shouldn't alarm you. Over the last eight months, as the Rural Water Supply Network, the, the partners of this network, the main partners, which is the World Bank, SDC, UNICEF, WSP, IRC, WaterAid, the African Development Bank, and SCAT, we hosted an international forum on specifically on rural drinking water supplies. And we put out an open call for papers for that event and were completely overwhelmed because 143 practitioners presented their practices with respect to the implementation of rural drinking water work. And for this event in Marseille, there were about 90 solutions put forward. So that's over 200, and there were some overlaps, so over 200 examples of initiatives, projects, programs, water users themselves doing things to improve sustainable access to water in rural areas. And in fact, that's a very small sample of what's going on. So there are tens of thousands even more of initiatives that are going on around the world. People really dedicated to improving their own supplies, to improving the supplies of the people within the countries that they live. Now, we as a network focus on four topics, and just to give you a bit of a flavour, in fact, this is tricky because with all these initiatives going on, it's very easy to overwhelm you with so much detail, with the rich detail of things that are happening. And I want to just give you a little bit of a flavour within these four topics, which are the topics that we worry about in our network. So the topic of equity and inclusion, the really interesting work that's happening in Madagascar, looking at access for disabled people, really how to improve design for disabled people. The very interesting work that's been done here by Sahatlana in India, trying to fully understand within communities who has access and who doesn't, particularly with respect to different castes. The work that's been done over many years in Uganda to really understand where people actually live and where water supplies take place and to take decisions about how to allocate resources to bring up services for those who are not served. Groundwater. There are Nigerian drillers who are coming together trying to look at how to deal with issues of corruption in the sector. We're talking about the, the, the government of Sri Lanka forming a group around sustainable groundwater develop to, development to really take the country forward as a whole and ensure that these groundwater resources can be used sustainably in the long term. The work of excellent development in Kenya, looking at sand dams and trying to really ensure that water is infiltrating into the ground and people are able to access it where they live for their drinking use and for other use. Management and support. If you travel to Burkina Faso, you'll find very interesting initiatives with local government together with OVIS, looking at how local governments can properly support services after they've been constructed. If you go to Malawi and you talk to a gentleman called Edward Fidi, a district water office officer, who very bravely wrote a paper and presented it in Kampala about what happens when NGOs don't coordinate with district local government and how it's impossible to work properly. Take engineers without borders who are really trying to understand the essence of supporting hand pump mechanics. Mm -hmm. These are just some of the examples. Yeah? 
And we're not just talking about quiet water sources, we're talking about organisations who are really thinking about how to support small rural growth centres with quiet water supplies. There is so much going on. It's overwhelming and it's fantastic. Self-supply, another topic that we look at. The government of Ethiopia, who have now endorsed self-supply as an official policy. For those of you who don't know what self-supply is, it's about organisations supporting users to improve their own sources themselves in incremental steps. Particularly interesting for very remote, difficult to serve areas. But actually, as we realised with an interesting seminar we had with, with hosted by WSP, even in some peri-urban settlements in India, people are resorting to self-supply sources because the governments are, the, the, the systems are not always functioning continuously. So there are many organisations doing things, there are many networks who are also bringing these topics together. Let's try to learn from those, huh? to share what people are doing. Now I talked about the topics that we look at, but there are many other topics in this area. Multiple use, and there's a multiple use group which is really trying to bring the linkages together between water for agriculture, water for drinking. And there are many, many technologies which are coming up in the sector but are struggling to be embedded within national systems. And another area which is absolutely essential, particularly for large scale scaling up, is that of those national and large programs. I have four messages for you, and I see I'm running out of time, so let me just try and read them. It's quite far away. So one is a message to, to implementers to really fully consider incremental approaches so that services continue to be improved over time. It's not just a one-off stop, and those increments can be different starting at different stages. To the practitioners and professionals, one thing we've noticed in the papers is many people are writing about what they're doing but not necessarily linking up to the bigger picture. Mm. So please link up with others, not just in water but also in health and in agriculture. And then to the partners and the members of, of the network, the implementers, we really want you to see you documenting and sharing your practices, not just propaganda, not just telling us how good you are, but really looking at what works and what doesn't and sharing that with others so that others can also improve. And the last point, because there are so many specific initiatives to build synergies with others and national programs and really take the sector forward as a whole, so we have many synergetic actions within rural drinking water. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kirsten Duff-Donald, for the...